Hi, I'm Valerie Bodell. Welcome to Communication of Chaos. This is the third in a series of three related courses. This is a five-week, one-credit course. As promised, you don't have to buy any books for this course, and you don't have to work any math or physics problems unless you want to. The course information is in D2L, but I want to give you a couple of things in particular. One is that discussions are an important part of your grade. In order to get full credit on discussions, you must participate in the conversation, not just reiterate what your classmates have written. Consider composing your posts and getting them down in your own words before you read what your classmates have written. I'll be looking for a paragraph or two that presents your ideas and backs them up with examples from the literature. Replying with, I agree, will not be enough. You'll need to further the conversation, comment on what your classmates have written, take them a step further, maybe bring up something new, whatever suits you. I also want to let you know that the best way to contact me is by email. I generally respond to emails within 24 hours, but I check my email less often on the weekends. So please do not wait until the last minute to read your assignment and realize that you don't know what you're supposed to do. Read your assignments early in the week. Email me while I have time to help you with any questions or issues. Um, I also want to let you know that your final assignment is a formal paper, 1,000 to 1,500 words, five to seven pages on any topic related to the communication of chaos. And this course is only five weeks. We're barely going to scratch the surface of the subject. Communication of chaos encompasses all media, art, dance, <clears throat> excuse me, dance, of course, a large body of literature and a large body of scholarship. For your final paper, you can choose any media you want. If you're not sure it's appropriate, run it by me first. I would be surprised if there was something that I felt you couldn't use. There will be plenty of things I don't know anything about. Feel free to enlighten me. Um, because the course is so short, I am going to focus on short narratives. In fact, short science fiction narratives. But again, you can pick anything you want. If any of you have taken any of the first courses, um, then the next part will just be, this next little section, will just be a little review, albeit from a different point of view. For those of you who have not taken either of the first courses, this will be a summary, it's actually a list of the characteristics of chaos that we will be looking for in this course. So there are seven characteristics that we'll be looking for this time. The first is chaotic systems are very complex. The weather is the go-to example of a chaotic system. It is so complex with so many variables, it can be raining on one block and bright sunshine on the next. Second characteristic, yes, I have a cheat sheet here. Chaotic systems are sensitive to initial conditions. This means that if you have two processes that start from infinitesimally different initial conditions, they will reach wildly different ends. This is why we have trouble predicting the weather. There are so many variables, we can't even name them all. And the ones we name, we don't measure them in enough precision to get our prediction to start from the exact same place that the actual weather is. So very quickly, our prediction diverges from reality. Third characteristic, chaotic systems are deterministic. This means that if you had two processes that started from exactly the same initial conditions, they would always reach the same ends. This raises some interesting questions about fate and free will, which I'll touch on a little bit later and feel free to discuss in the class because that's one of the things I find really interesting about chaos. Fourth characteristic, chaotic systems are dynamical. That just means they change through time. Fifth characteristic, they are nonlinear. There's no simple arithmetic relationship between one of the variables in the system and time. If you measured temperature against and plotted it against time, you would not get a straight line. Uh, sixth characteristic, chaotic systems are self-similar at different scales. Not self-same, self-similar at different sizes. So an example would be the branching of veins on a leaf are similar to the branching of boughs on the whole tree. A single mountain is similar to the entire mountain range. And finally, the seventh characteristic is that chaotic systems are produced by iteration. 
To go back to our weather example, much of our weather is driven by the repetition of the Earth rotating on its axis day, night, day, night, and its revolution around the sun. The months follow each other and year after year. As you read and analyze narratives or whatever media you choose for your final paper, I expect you to find some of these characteristics. I would be very surprised if you found all of them in one source, but you never know. All right, I also want to talk about the possibilities of alternate universes revealed by time travel. If time travel is possible, then the moment that you materialized or your pod landed or your wormhole opened, you would make an infinitesimal difference in your timeline. So the timeline you came from still exists because that's where you came from. But you've now created a new timeline that's going to diverge rapidly from your old one, creating a new reality, a new universe. And chaologists often talk about the fact that every decision we make creates a new universe, a bifurcation in the timeline. If I decide to go down to the corner store and get jelly beans, that's going to change my timeline. But they feel, often chaologists feel, that in another universe, I did not go down to the corner store and get jelly beans. And since these complex chaotic systems are deterministic, the new timeline where I do go and get jelly beans is going to vary wild, wildly and widely from the one where I don't get jelly beans. So infinite people, infinite decisions, infinite universes, often called the multiverse. Something to think about. And sort of a corollary, we have free will to choose to get jelly beans or not. But once you've made that decision, that timeline, you've determined that you're on this particular timeline and you can't go back to the other one. I don't have to eat the jelly beans, but I still bought them. And that small decision is going to affect much of my future. So I look forward to thinking about this stuff in the coming weeks, and I hope you do too. And we'll talk about them together. Thank you.